Howdy folks, hope you're doing all right, hanging in there, thriving, somewhere around that spectrum. We uh, put in a bunch of garden yesterday in the driving cold rain. That was miserable, but it makes for a good story now that it's done. And the tomatoes look better in the earth than in a cup. So um, Today, just at random, picking a piece out of Million Billion. Million Billion is the new one. Um, it's called Million Billion, and then the subtitle is eight miles long. The subtitle is Brief Essays on Snow Day, Spit Wads, Bad Sandwiches, Dad Socks, Hair Balls, Head Banging, Bird Love, and Hope. Gotta have some hope. So the one I, and this is available now, by the way, independent booksellers, um, can get it through Ingram, and, um, it's available wherever you buy books, it's available wherever you buy ebooks for that matter, uh, Kindle, Nook. And, uh, and then, of course, you can go to www.sneezingcow.com and get you a copy. And all those copies from there are signed by me, and they're shipped by a local business. So we feel good about that. Every time you buy one of those books, you're supporting a small local distributor. This one's called Truck Snacks. I haven't been able to indulge this one lately. I have a very bad habit of eating late at night. It may be my undoing. It certainly put me in a bind last week. When instead of driving straight home from a job in a nearby town just 20 minutes from the farm where our refrigerator is filled with fresh and original victuals, I pulled into a gas station in order to buy some food. Food, in this case, being a euphemism for snacky treats not available at home where things run heavy to fiber crisp veggies and the occasional kale-based smoothie. As I shut off our old plow truck and slunk into the convenience store, my internal voice was saying, you are making naughty nutritional decisions and possibly violating your marriage vows. But then this other internal voice hollered, hey, day-old apple fritters, only a buck. It is not important to tell you what I bought, although somewhere there exists security cam footage of me chasing the last dill pickle slice around the vat with a plastic spoon so that in a pinch I could say I ate something green with my roller dog. I hustled back to the truck with my contraband and turned the key. The starter cranked and cranked, but nothing else happened. My face went as white as a powdered mini donut. It wasn't because of the truck. It dies about every four months. But how was I going to explain where and when it died? Nervously, I nibbled at a kettle chip. Then I called for a tow, but for reasons having to do with the attached snowplow, none was available until morning. Now I had two additional problems. One was how to get home. The second was how to explain to my wife why I was at the gas station after midnight. I briefly considered saying I was getting gas, but A, I had just filled the truck the day prior and she knew it, and B, the truck died in the parking stall nearest the store entrance, nowhere near a pump. Even if I went with the refueling ruse, I'd still have to explain why I reparked the truck so near the donuts. Desperate, I got a can of starting fluid and in a contortion worthy of a roughneck acrobat, pumped the accelerator and twisted the starter while reaching around with my free hand to spray bottle throttle in the general direction of the carburetor. The engine fired and rattled like a diesel but wouldn't sustain. I briefly considered driving home with the hood up while spritzing the engine compartment with ether but suspected this would lead to arrest and cracked pistons. It was now nearly 1 a.m., Rather than wake my wife, I arranged a ride home and slipped quietly into bed. At dawn, I told her the darn truck had died again. Where is it? she asked. I told her, and her mouth said, okay. What her eyes said was a little more complicated. You could tell she was doing a little logistical math based on prior knowledge of my bad habits. I told her the truth. I'd like to claim this as a testament to my character, but... I had done some math of my own. This was clearly one of those situations where the first cut is the deepest, but at least you don't wind up tangled in the razor wire. Furthermore, she can detect the scent of artificial cheese dust from 40 paces. I was rewarded for my honesty when, upon returning to the scene of the crime, the truck started at the first touch, saving me the price of a tow. I drove directly to the repair shop, arriving greatly fortified, by a two-day-old apple fritter I found in a bag down by the gear shift. All right, <laughs> hang in there. Forward.